Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for All About Android is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of All About Android is brought to you by HipChat Plus. Collaborate, save time, be more productive with your teams. HipChat Plus is IM, video chat, plus file, code, and screen sharing all in one place. Invite your team members and get a free 30-day trial of HipChat Plus at hipchat.com slash allaboutandroid. And by Squarespace, creating and editing your website is easier than ever using their redesigned interface, Squarespace 7, which includes integrations with Giddy Images and Google Apps, new templates, and more. Try the new Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code about Android at checkout to get 10% off. And by LegalZoom. Visit LegalZoom.com to save on your legal needs and gain access to a network of legal plan attorneys for guidance. LegalZoom is not a law firm, but provides self-help services at your specific direction. Visit LegalZoom.com and use offer code AAA to receive $10 off at checkout. Hello and welcome to another episode of All About Android, episode 197, recorded on Tuesday, January 20th, 2015. We're your weekly source for the latest news, hardware, and apps for the Android faithful. I'm Jason L. I'm Ron Richards. Hello, Ron. It's Hello, good, Jason. Good to have you here. Good to see you, sir. Welcome, yes. welcome to the show. It's very nice to make your acquaintance. I'm looking forward to it. Once again, yes. we've got lots of things. I have 197. Oh. That's kind of crazy, actually. You're three now, away from 200, yeah. Now, now that I think about it, that's a lot of episodes. Think about it. I didn't mean to derail you You know, there. You know who was there from the beginning? Who? You and I. Well, yeah, you were, the, you were there before me. Well, well okay, I the guess maybe shows. two beta episodes yeah, I before. Missed, I missed one or but two. But you, beta you, were, you were still there from the very I'm first holding on. I'm holding on for dear life. <laughs> They're going to have to peel me out of this chair. The show this may is... change, <laughs> but we'll, we'll always be here, at least as far as <laughs> as far as I know, anyways. Don't don't leave me, please. Nope, nope. Uh, we are super excited to welcome to the show Florence Ion, staff writer at Greenbot. How are you doing, Florence? Hello, I am doing well. Excellent. It's so good having you on the show. I've uh, been following your work. I actually... Uh, the last few months, I think it was a couple of months ago, you were on one of our other shows, Tech News Tonight. And, yes, I uh, was. Talking all about Lollipop. What do you think about Lollipop in the last two months? I wouldn't know. I don't have it yet. Oh. oh. Well, that's depressing. I, think, I mean, I do on some, you know, test devices, but not on my main device, which is my HTC One M8. Oh, okay. So you're so, on the One M8. Okay. Yeah. I wonder when HTC is going to push it out to that. You're probably going to see it. It's I don't almost know. 90 days. Oh and, oh, and did they say within the 90 days? They made the promise. They were bold by making a That's promise. That's got to be soon, yeah. right? That's yeah. like end of February, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Oh, man. I'm, I'm nervous for your for HTC. I, I'm, ner I'm yeah, nervous, yeah, about all the OEMs. I, wanna, I can't wait to see what they do with this lollipop. I'm so excited. I, I feel thing. bad for those engineers at HTC where they're just sitting there trying once to you, make it work. And once, yeah. once you make that declaration, it's, that clock a lot is of pressure. ticking. Like there's just a big clock, big calendar behind <laughs> them with like number of days till, you know, whatever. What, what are you doing, Bob? Uh, uh, I'm just uh, eating lunch. You know kidding. we made a promise, right? <laughs> You need to get back to oh, work. Oh, man. Long weekends. Long weekends yeah. at the HTC factory. Hey, you do what you got to yeah. do to get back into the cell phone industry you because do, yeah. they've. Uh, Listen, the they Android game is not a game to be trifled with. That's what I've learned in all these years. And, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to. You're going to play Android. You got to play it right. So mm -hmm. HTC, HTC normally is a good one. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We actually have stuff in today's show about HTC. I'm more of the rumory type, but still it's fun to talk about. We're also going to be talking about Project Ara. Florence was at the Project Ara developer conference last week. Very Can't wait to talk to about that. that. Yeah. Uh, happened to have the Samsung Gear VR, not just the box. Inside here is an actual VR unit. Uh, so we can take a look at that. We've got uh, news on Google Glass, Xiaomi's Mi Note, and a few other things. But before we go any further, I have to mourn the loss of a, a really close, dear friend of mine. This is shocking, by the way. Wait, yes. hang on. Before I'd you say, show I it, don't know. I mean, we need to warn everyone at home this... that we're going to see some disturbing imagery. That if you're, you have, this is a trigger warning. If you have issues, you might want to press pause. Thank this you, is... Brian, for the censor. This okay, is, Jason, you not, can show them what happened. Yeah, this is not safe for life right here. This uh, is... <laughs> oh, oh, God. So just, can you it flip sucks. it over to confirm that it is, in fact, your Nexus 6? It is, it is my white Nexus 6. 
That is so dangerous. You're going to cut your fingers I'm off. Not no, I'm not going to touch the glass. And no, all I want to know, Jason, is what oh, did the Nexus 6 do to you man. to deserve this? Yeah, what did you do? <laughs> Oh, so this is just depressing. I thought like I, it's comical how shattered that is. You, you guys, I, I thought I could come on the show and do this, but I was wrong. I can't do this. I, keep it together, I can't, even, keep I can't it even make it to the end of this segment. Um, I was coming into work on Sunday, you know, doing what I always do when I'm walking from my car to work, which is checking my email, making mm -hmm. sure I didn't miss anything on the that, drive. There was your first mistake. And I reached out to do the front door. This literally happened right in front of Twit. Reached out to do the front door, and it just went, Eep. and when it did it, though, it actually did it glass, like, direct, right on the ground, oh. right on, like, an uneven part of the concrete. So I'm not even sure a case would have helped, and even then, though it probably so would wait, have helped so, a So bit. you go to close the door, oh. the phone slides out of your hand, oh, glass God. first, onto an uneven this pavement. Hurts. At what point did the circus elephants come by? <laughs> and stand trample on it. <laughs> And but, at what point did the stampede happen? Look, and then when did the Panzer tank drive over oh, it? <laughs> look, there's something you you need to understand. A re and reminder for those who don't know: I'm six foot eight. I'm a tall guy. I'm like a skyscraper. So you you drop a phone from me, and yeah, it's gonna have a bad Empire day. Empire State Building, Penny, you're gonna kill somebody at the end. Yeah, thankfully I'm, I'm this didn't. I'm surprised the phone didn't kill a child. Yeah, to be honest yeah. with you, yes, yeah. Somebody could have been hurt. Oh, that boy. is on. Oh, so okay, so, so this so, isn't just like a crack screen. Like the actual display underneath uh, after it happened, like, you couldn't. Like it was glitchy and everything. So I mean, it's this is like you dropped it through a portal and it toast. went to another dimension and came back. And this is what it looked oh. like. This is like oh, it hurts. <laughs> so did you? So here's the question. The the the, the six hundred dollar question. Yeah, did you actually try, seven hundred and forty nine dollar question. Seven hundred and forty nine dollar question. Did you try our little trick of calling Google and be like, hey, I, did. I, I cracked my glass? I did. I spoke to a very nice woman, and we had a little bit of a conversation in which she basically told me I'm out of luck and I need to contact Motorola. Uh, I don't think they're doing it for the 6 nearly as oh, easily wow. as they were for the 5. They probably had extra inventory for the 5, I'm guessing. Wow. Uh, I know some people have had luck with it, but I didn't. However, you I did. You should call Motorola. What's you that? Should, you should call Motorola. I'm they're yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you think they they'd be to, to amenable? This to is it? not I mean, supposed to do that. It's not supposed to look well, like. That. I'm not supposed to drop yeah, it. Yeah, but you know, cats land on their feet when they fall out, but phones always land screen first. That's sort of the rule of gravity in life. Yeah. So it's, it's still <laughs> on, apparently. <laughs> apparently, it's still on. You wouldn't know if you hit the screen on because it doesn't okay, show you. But... Okay, Google. Okay, Google. No. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Don't um, shatter. Uh, the credit card that it, that I bought it with uh, is a Visa Signature, so it has warranty protection uh, within 120 days. So this is a little tip for you guys. You, you buy go. your phones with uh, certain credit cards, they have warranty protection built in. So it covers up to $500, which is more than a $500 phone. If they can repair it, that's going to cover the repair costs. If they need to replace it, that's $500 towards a new device. Uh, with a lot of paperwork and a lot of hoop jumping. I have to, like, take this to a quote-unquote authorized dealer uh, and have them analyze it and let me know whether it's repairable or not. I haven't even gone there because I just don't have time. But um, anyways, gave me a good reason to go back to the OnePlus One. They got to do the OnePlus One. Jeez. Yeah, yeah. and the Nexus yeah. 5. So I have options. <laughs> it really could have happened to a worse person. At least I have options. A lot of people don't. You're prepared. Oh. It still hurts. The so did you have to report the disaster to the city of Petaluma after it happened? I mean, because clearly other things were damaged. In, in oh, yeah, the, the sidewalk. You don't want to see the sidewalk. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a heavy phone, so yeah, it did some yeah. damage. Wow. Uh, I didn't, I, by the way, when you posted that photo on Google+, Plus, yeah. I thought it was a prank. I did not believe it. Oh, believe it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's been sitting on my desk in front of me for the last two days Smart as I work, just staring at me <laughs> little tiny shards of glass like have dusted off into the workspace and i'm like i need to remove this but i'm not going to because i need to learn yeah. <laughs> i need to learn <laughs> like something a case i don't know <laughs> anyways oh. okay uh so that's that, that's uh, that. can uh, we note this for the end of the year best of show yeah i don't want to relive this <laughs> <laughs> what do you say instead we get to the news? Oh. Some of you might be waiting for Lollipop, but you don't have to wait any longer for Android News. That was good. That was a nice, subtle transition with the glass well breaking. Thank you, Brian. Brian's, Brian's bringing his A game today. Yeah, I, um, I can tell. So a funny thing happens when you are kind of part of a B-level uh, viral video. 
that whenever something happens with that product, everyone's going to email you and tell you about any little change. Oh, so did you hear from a lot of people? Oh, I heard from a lot of people about the Google Glass news. Okay. I heard from a lot of people. Well, you, you need to know. <laughs> if you didn't hear, um, which I find ironic because I don't even own it, but if you didn't hear, um, <laughs> Google announced last week that it is retiring the Glass Explorer program and is no longer producing glass in its current form. And what everyone uh, took from that was that glass is dead. But that's not the case at all. Uh, <laughs> work on Google Glass will continue on a future version of the product, and they say they're still committed to making it a viable consumer product. Support will continue for those who have the hardware, and Google, the Google Glass division will now move out of the Google X division and into the hands of Ivy Ross, reporting to Tony Fidel, the chief exec, exec of the Nest Group in the consumer products division. Fidel says the team learned valuable insight from its time of glass as we know it, and those learnings will be integrated into new products. There's no time scale given for the new version of glass. So what you had was you had a lot of people emailing me telling me that, that now, you know, ah, glass, it, it failed. The project failed. They're, they're taking it mm -hmm. off the market. But this is what's supposed to happen. It's moving into the consumer product division, and now the next version will be something that you could buy probably for a cheaper price. The big question mark, though, is why announce that they're ending the, the Explorer program? Why not do it quietly? Why make this, you know, kind of that sort of thing? But then also, when will we see this new glass product? And a lot of people are speculating that we'll see it at Google I.O. And are we going to actually see a, quote, glass product or are we just going to see the successful pieces of this experiment right you want to call it that rolled in other things um florence did you have a chance to play around with glass what what were your impressions what do you think of the long-term uh, kind of viability on, of this i i put on matt honan's uh glasses last uh google io 2013 mm -hmm. and i was not impressed <laughs> and you know because we live in the Bay Area, we've heard all about the sort of social backlash that's come across this yeah. little device. So I'm honestly, I'm at the point where I'm like, good riddance, go into your little hole, figure out what you want to do. And when you're ready, come back out again. So, which, which you know, I, it's probably a smart move. Which I think is accurate because as I've gone on to, uh, someone in the chat room just called me being a glass apologist, which I find very funny. <laughs> but listen, I got really excited the first time I used it. And really that was like week one. And it was like this yeah. cool, I mean, like the like technology wise is very cool, but I yeah. still looking back on it. And even now I say that glass it was right idea, wrong time, and that it was almost too much too soon. Mm -hmm. And that if glass had come out after, you know, the wearables and the watches became more acceptable and all that sort of stuff, then we would ease into it a little better and probably in a better form factor and all that sort of stuff. But because it was so alien and that dumb thing on your face and that crazy woman at my local bar and it just doesn't, you know, like it, it you know, it all became a problem. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious what the next iteration will look like if it's, if it's, you know, if it's going to be sleeker, if it's going to be less intrusive, if they're going to address some of the other issues with it, or, or are they going to bust out the parts and integrate them into different products that we don't even know about yet? You know? Yeah, I know. Right. Like the, one of the big, big problems, uh, was just the funky looking aspect of it and yes. the social implication of that. Uh, early on it was just, oh, isn't that interesting? This is what the, you know, this is what science fiction looks like. So let's, you know, at least, at least take it, uh, at that level. Mm -hmm. But then as time wore on, people, you know, were afraid of the camera. They, the fact that you're wearing it was like a signal that, uh, you're intruding on somebody's privacy. It, right. was, it, it carried a lot of baggage with it. I'm, I don't know. A part of me is would be surprised if we see another glass that's similar to this, unless it's embedded in something that you're already wearing. But if it's a piece of gear that you have to put on that that looks different from anything else that you might wear on your face, right. I'm not sure that they go that route again because they already know the reaction, yeah. and that's oh, that's different. That's weird, and now I fear it. Well, yeah, and, and what's, what I think is the two things that are interesting from it are is that with the Explorer program, hopefully they got what they wanted, which was a large set, a data set of people using the product and reporting back on what they're learning and what they're affecting from it that they can then take that learning and apply. Although I do worry about it being un, in the Nest group from what I've heard about the Nest group not being the best group at Google. Nest, but not the best. Not the best. Okay. Um, but uh, given their the smoke detector problem and all that sort of stuff. But mm -hmm. anyway. Um, but then also, um, one thing that people forget about or, or may not realize, whatever, is that the TI chip running in the Google Glass can't run Lollipop. So right. you can't upgrade Google Glass to the latest version of Android. So it was a dead product to a certain degree. So why invest in the next generation in the Explorer program when you can invest in the consumer product plan, which was always the plan from the get-go? Yeah. So I know some people also say, leave the camera out. You yeah. know, the same, same product, leave the camera out. I'm not even sure that saves it. 
to be yeah. honest. Um, a, the camera is actually one of the things I actually enjoy about my pair of glasses. You, the you, only reason you I use, use it is that I case. want to, you know, record my kids or whatever. It comes in really handy for that. Um, but B, I think the general public is is, and, and that's the wide majority of people. Uh, don't you know fear the implications of glass whether it has a camera or not because they don't know whether it has a camera or not right. just looking at it those the people that are in the know are going to look at it and be like oh that dot isn't there anymore it, it this is the model that doesn't have a camera but everybody else know. is going to be like oh that's that glass thing that records people and blah 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 and i don't like it so so here's the question i saw florence making faces while i was talking too is it is it a dead product like can they bring it back another consumer in any form what do you think florence dead product I, I don't even think Dion von uh, Furstenberg was enough to save it. So I would, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I mean, I just, I, I had a lot of uh, issues with Google Glass from the get-go. Just A, I thought it looked really silly. Um, B, I... <laughs> that looks normal <laughs> exactly. to me. I mean, so that, yeah. It's a corgi. It's always adorable no matter what it has on it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, way to go, you know, Brian. And, and, and your comment about it being science fiction, I don't think that's really science fiction-y as it is like a bunch of people got together and said, hey, Let's put some parts into a pair of glasses and call it a glass. Like, I don't know. It's just sort of, <laughs> it just seems like an experiment gone wrong. And, yeah. and I think, you know, it, you know, I'd really like to see is Google come out with like a, like baby surveillance tech or something of the like with their uh, Nest product line. You know, I think that would be, because a lot of the people I heard who, who loved glass were parents. They yeah. liked being able to take photos of their kids. Yeah you know, as they were hanging out with them and sort of like make those memories last. So maybe they should just stick to that. Yeah, almost tailor it for just that use. That That's yeah. an interesting yeah. point. That's, I mean, that's, that's exactly how I use it. Yeah. It, it stays charged until, oh, it's, uh, you know, it's my daughter's uh, five-year birthday. Yeah. Yep. Cool. We'll pull it out and it'll be funny. Yeah, now when she's going to the, now she's going to the prom. Let's pull yeah. it out again. <laughs> oh, oh man, I pull out a pair of glass like however many years, thirteen 20, years from 20, now. 30, you're just like, Dad, you're still using glass. It has like five minutes of battery at this point. What's going on? For her, her dance at the wedding and you're yeah. there. There, there we go. Yeah, that's uh, there she is. It's well. That's my youngest Wait a minute, daughter. so she's wearing the glass now? I, I thought it was funny to put it on her. <laughs> that was the same day that she took her first steps. I know, I remember. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right, let's move on here. Uh, frequent guest of the show, that's Russell Hawley, uh, at Android Central now, actually interviewed Steve Kondik of Cyanogen Inc. last week about, you know, we talked about it plenty of times on the show, the, the kind of surrounding controversy around Cyanogen's relationship with OnePlus in India and the sudden exclusivity uh, confusion with Micromax. Cyanogen had been silent up until this point. We got a little bit of information in this interview, though. Kondak says that Cyanogen is actually trapped in the middle of a battle between OnePlus and Micromax since they supply Cyanogen mod to both companies. Kondak said with each company, a short exclusivity was included in the agreements. We thought they, they were pretty straightforward. Our agreement with Micromax uh, it was never meant to be retroactive against OnePlus, and that's where the problem came from. Uh, he talked about licensing. Licensing of CM for both devices is actually free. And he, he actually kind of expanded on that, saying that, uh, you know, Cyanogen Inc., it's a venture-funded company. No focus on monetization right now. They want to bring this new experience and kind of, you know, figure out how they might make money from it later. Uh, something I think we talked about that yep. last week uh, in regards to uh, something different. Man, uh, I, wait, I just I want to work at a company where there's no focus on monetization. In, in regards to OnePlus. But, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah I like, know, right? Yeah, just like, yeah, we're not worried. There's no focus Whatever. on monetization. Just have fun. Whatever. <laughs> See what happens. Just get it out there. <laughs> uh, support will continue, Steve says, uh, for those with Cyanogen Mod installed. And Lollipop is planned to ship next month. So, uh, you know, considering that I have a OnePlus now and that I'm using it again. Well, for now, until you drop it. <laughs> uh, you know, hopefully this means I'll get Lollipop here too. Because I will say, after a couple of months with Lollipop on the Nexus 6, yeah. going back to the OnePlus is great on one hand. But, but the KitKat side of it, I'm like, no, I should just manually update it. Uh, so, you know, a little, little Android drama, but a little clearing of the air. I don't know where this leaves us as far as this story is concerned. <laughs> yeah. I think I think it's actually really interesting news when you look at what's going on uh, in emerging markets mm -hmm. and the battle to sort of 
capture that particular niche of the market that we don't really see on a day to day. Um, and I've spoken with Steve so many times before on for varying articles that I've written about uh, Cyanogen and they really just want to get their platform out there. And, you know, you really can't run into this kind of drama and, mm-hmm. and one plus has been drama since day one. So much <laughs> it's drama. Just, it's so much drama and, and that can't be good for their image, at least not to the Android faithful. I don't know. Because a lot of people don't know OnePlus by name. Mm-hmm. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, OnePlus is definitely, you know, it's a new company. I, I've, yeah. Actually, I've gotten more comments, like, out of the blue on this phone than I have than I have right. on any phone that I'm using. Because well, people don't carry, recognize it, but it looks really good. You should carry so, that Nexus right. 6 around. And you're <laughs> I get a lot of comments <laughs> if I carry this around. I also get a, a bloody finger yeah. <laughs> and a lot of other things. You should really be careful about that. I'm, Sorry, I'm like, mom instinct. Not that I have children <laughs> or anything, but... I know, but you know... I've yes, stepped you're on right. glass before. I had to go and have my oh. leg put to sleep to get it taken out. So. That's no fun. Ooh. DSG. Oh, so. my goodness. <laughs> my goodness. Um, okay, I promise to try and not pick up the Nexus 6 anymore, but it's just, just staring for, at me. For your hands alone. You need your hands to the mouse. It would be really good TV, yeah. though, if your hands started bleeding. It's true. Yeah. It's Maybe nice. I should. It'll make the best up. Yeah. Uh, okay, what else do we got? A little more drama. Not really that much drama, but uh, so mobile payment wars continue as Google's rumored to possibly be pursuing an acquisition of SoftCard, which used to be called ISIS until they changed their name. I wonder why. Um, So uh, SoftCard, formerly ISIS, not the ISIS you're thinking of, um, has been backed by Verizon, T-Mobile, and AT&T since 2010. And as such, Google's own secure element was was effectively blocked those carriers' devices, making Google Wallet a bit more of a challenge for those users. Reports of late say that SoftCard has been losing ground, 15 million per month, and layoffs have taken place. Um and I lost my place as well. Could be right, right. Um, yeah. So it could be right for the picking. That's the point. No official word of this yet. This is very much a rumor. Um, but you know that the the See back it. and forth with all these mobile payment platforms it just it seems like every other week there's another rumor. Uh, I, <laughs> only sort of related. Well, kind of related. Mobile payments related. I finally started using uh Google Wallet on a regular basis. When I when I go to Whole Foods now, I, you know, I, I kind of went through the setup and everything. Pretty good. Yeah. Like, yeah, some sometimes I have to ask myself like is it faster or not? Right. You know, I could, you know, I could just get my credit card, but uh I don't know. I think this mobile payment thing has some legs. What do you think, Florence? Do you use it at all? Have you used it? Uh, uh no. I I do not use mobile any mobile payment of any sort. Uh but I do know the controversy with uh Google Wallet, just because all the carriers had sort of like shut them out. And so mm-hmm. now Google's sort of going after soft card to wedge itself in. I'm on Verizon, so I'm locked out of everything. <laughs> everything <laughs> oh, is- I, I, That's why I, I know, bailed. That's why I, I, I know that pain. Updates, but you know what? I have lots of service in Mexico. So. <laughs> well, that's important. There you go. There you I go. know. that it's, it's totally the trade off, isn't it? Yeah. Here, in the, here yeah. in the U.S., it's like. Right, and if it's particularly if you're not just an Android user but an Android fan, right. it's like you're torn because Verizon has the best coverage, but the worst kind of you know, man, Android approach. It's like I never, I never looked back. I was, I was yeah, Verizon I from like yeah, late '90s up until the day the G1 or the a week after the G1 came out. And I switched to T-Mobile, and I have been unlocked, no contract ever since. I just pop a new SIM card in my new phone that I buy and. You know, T-Mobile doesn't have as robust of a network as Verizon, but let's be it honest, doesn't. I'm not going to Nebraska. And then also, But are you going to Mexico? Uh, I actually haven't been to Mexico. Oh, okay. oh but well, you know then. what? T-Mobile takes care of its people when you guys go internationally. Yes, they do. All, all my coworkers have T- T-Mobile and for uh, MWC for Barcelona, I'm the one, the only one who's going to have to get a SIM card. No, I went. To, I went to yeah. England. I went to England in November, and I called ahead. I'm like, "Hey, I'm going to, you know, I need international, yeah. whatever." And they're like, "Oh, great, you've got unlimited data, unlimited texting." Yeah. And I was like, "Really?" And they're like, "Yes." Yeah. And on that same call, they put me on a new plan that lowered my monthly payment, still unlocked, like uh, still like no contract. I was like, "This is great." So yeah, no complaints. And great. now, admittedly, I get I go deep into a club in the city or something like that, and I can't get service. But yes. whatever, you, I don't you care. shouldn't be on your phone anyway. You should be experiencing the moment. Exactly. Exactly. 
Yeah, put your phone down. Stop stop no. recording and the concert with your phone. It's also, just going to be all maxed out and sound horrible anyway. Also, they got me that cell repeater thing in my apartment. Yeah, and now that's I right. Have, and now I have full bars in my apartment, which is awesome. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry, this became an ad for, for T-Mobile, not for Google Wallet. <laughs> <laughs> but Google Wallet's awesome. It's okay. We're all over the place yeah. on this one. Yeah. Uh, you know, hopefully that'll improve the mobile payment situation for, for Google Wallet users. Um yeah, I haven't been using Google Wallet as much, but less because <clears throat> Google Wallet is awesome and more because I hate Walgreens. So Oh, so you just stopped, just stopped going, stopped going, going there, there as much. There. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I and understand the, that. The bodega around the corner of my office doesn't have mobile payment things yet because they're just they <laughs> I'm not even sure they're legal. Those place, they place just got a credit card machine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's an extra which, three dollars. Which I don't feel very safe using, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so let's see here. So. Florence, you were at, were you at both, was it a two-day developer conference for uh, Project R last week, or was it just Wednesday? It was a two-day, but I have a story for you. I didn't go to the second day, so I actually went to Project R as super sick, Oh. Um, and I feel really terrible about this, and I'm really sorry to whoever gets sick, and I'm really praying to God that Paul Ermago does not get sick because I was totally in the same room as him and breathing with everybody <laughs> as we were doing the hands-on with the modular smartphone. And I'm just like, don't let anybody know your nose is running. Don't don't cough. <laughs> oh, man, that's that's a nightmare <laughs> situation. I, I feel so bad about it, but I have to do my job. Yeah. So. You know what? We all get <laughs> sick. It's the winter. It's just the way it goes. I know. Uh, um, if, you'd, if you hadn't done it, somebody else would have. <laughs> I'm sure so somebody the, else did, actually. But so the question is, were you congested enough to not realize, to not note how awesome Project R is? Or is, am I just reading into it? Is Project R as cool as I hope it is? It's not, you know, okay, I am I might have an unpopular opinion, but I don't think it's, I mean, it doesn't do anything. Like, it's just a phone with little blocks in it. It doesn't actually do anything yet. Um, and, you know, it, it's still not really a product but Google's kind of getting there. And it's really interesting because being at this developer conference, like you're surrounded by all these, you know, really bright eyed, like intelligent people. Um, There were high schoolers running around, uh, running around. They'd all like skip school to come to this developers conference. You know, there were people from all over the world there and they were asking so many questions, but a lot of their questions couldn't be answered by Google. A lot of Google statements were just, you know, uh, we'll get back to you on that. We'll get back to you on that. We're still working on that. And it's sort of like it, 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 uh, it really gave, it really was an example of just how much work still needs to be done on this particular project. It's, it's so far from, from being a thing. And I, we still don't know when it's coming to Puerto Rico, just that it's like, they, they had a little, yeah, they had a little roadmap just to kind of tell you that, you know, between like third and fourth quarter, we're hopefully going to go in there. So okay. we'll, we'll see, you know. Did they let you touch it? So everybody touched it except me because I felt really bad for being sick. <laughs> no, I, 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 I was trying to be a good, like, person. I put, you know, before being a good journalist. <laughs> so, that's fair that's enough. Uh, hard to yeah. argue that. Hard. So, but the, so from watching the people touching it that were touching it that, that you were not interacting with, did the did the components snap in and out easily? Like, what what was your takeaway from the hardware? Oh, I wanted to compare it to something, and then I I remembered when I was writing it up, I couldn't think of what to compare it to. But uh, it's a lot like uh, it kind of snaps like Legos. Like it oh, feels like cool. there's a little bit of resistance when you're trying to like take it off and put it on like um, magnetic resistance because there, there are magnets that kind of hold yeah. the pieces in place right yeah and you yeah. kind of you hear that that snapping sound uh but then everything just holds together um and i i actually now i feel really bad that i i didn't touch or hold it because i could give you guys so much more <laughs> <laughs> and i would have so much more but just don't worry about it. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, you, no. You, it's hey, you're, you're one step you closer there. to it than we you are. You saw so it. It's I fine. mean, for yeah, us, you, it's still like a Sasquatch. Same, yeah, you know? yeah, exactly. You were in the same room as it. I see saw. <laughs> blurry photos that purport to be real. <laughs> I think uh, the most interesting part of Project Aura, though, is that it's going to open the door for lots of other smartphone technology. And I think that's something that we're sort of forgetting is that as Google's iterating on this and creating modules, they're also trying to think of like, for instance, their big project right now is to work on a battery that's way more efficient than what the OEMs are currently using. 
Um, so that could eventually Hallelujah. translate to the rest of yeah. our battery tech. And that's, yeah. that's so interesting. I mean, just all the things that are to come out of this are interesting, but it's still just a tad too early to tell. I really wish that I were there so that I could drop this one <laughs> and see, and how, it see up. how it holds up when it lands. Do the pieces <laughs> pop off? In, in a million different directions, do yeah. they stay attached? Does the fact that it's it the, that it's a bunch of pieces attached into the body does it just shed, like does, it all go does that and, like yeah. soften the blow and, and nothing you know Wait, does it is one of the end up like this? Could one of the attachments be some sort of like airbag deployment? Because honestly, that the, the, that's what I'm kind of more, more, most curious about. Because we talk about like with smartphone technology, where is the innovation going to come from? And we've seen you know so, so much stuff get done with the handsets themselves, and we've seen so much development happen on the app side of things. But now this idea of snap-on hardware components where, you know, I don't know how tight Google's going to be in allowing people to make those little components, but can some, you know, hacker or whatever put together a battery that works 10 times better than what we're using? And then that becomes... Yes. You know, yeah. Yes. Google is... Sorry, I'm sort of answering a question you didn't have. Yes. But yes, that's what the whole point of this is, is Google is trying to get as many developers excited uh, about it as it can. They're, they are going to have a couple of guidelines just because... Um, one of the really interesting things they brought up is that they're trying to avoid fragmentation within the modular ecosystem, just like the fragmentation that's sort of happened in the Android ecosystem that we have now, the OS ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So they are going to watch it closely and kind of work with developers to make sure that things comply. Uh, but yeah, they're encouraged to make super cool stuff. And mm. it's... I don't think this is going to go down like glass, guys. I think I think something's going to come from this. You yeah. think this has legs? The same. Well, I, th I think there's some legs here. Yeah, it's not maybe not for our market, but definitely for emerging markets, like where people share cell phones mm -hmm. in in villages and things like that. They just you know swap components. That yeah, they well, you, said they want to. Yeah, sorry, it, go on. I mean, if you think <laughs> about it, there's so many there's so many different. I mean, you've got the emerging emerging markets where people are swapping cell phones and sharing yeah. and stuff like that. But you've also got photography where you can put on a better flash or a better lens oh, or like. Yeah, if I could put different lenses on my phone, yeah. I would, because I'm you know big into phone photography or whatever that means. Right, you know, <laughs> photography or whatever. Ph or so, photography. So, so, someone like me who who <laughs> likes to go see bands play and I want to record yeah. video. Uh -huh. Could I get a better microphone? Could I get a better right. you know like that sort of you know or audio stereo audio mic aspect module on you each know, side? Then there are the things that we're not even thinking mm -hmm. about. You know, yeah. like you know, yeah. could Square make a card reader component that just snaps on the back? You know, have to have a dumb dongle sticking out of your phone. You know, what I mean, like there are all these different kind. You know, and these are there are things. You know, I'm an idiot. I, there are things I haven't even thought of. You know, like they're much smarter people who are going to build this stuff that mm -hmm. uh, I, I think it's really cool just as long as they're not all designed like they are in your photos on your post because some of those are just downright ugly <laughs> it's, a, it's a second gen you know it's a second gen second gen uh yeah. product right yeah it's no, not I know. really a product it's a second gen demo that's what Idea. it is. Idea. <laughs> yeah. But With sure, sure enough, there's going to be people who are going to be like, oh, make your components and print your photos on them. Like, you're going to get right, that, right, that right. whole, you know, like, um, you know, support ecosystem around the components, you know, where people yeah, are going to... Customizing yeah. and everything. Okay, but that, that phone that you saw in my article, uh, the different mm -hmm. uh, photos that were on it, those are Paul Aramenko's phones. So those are two... Those those are two of his dogs. And then I think a couple... I think those are, those are his... Uh, spouse's shoes i can't remember if he said they were married or not i feel bad like disclosing this personal information sure. and not <laughs> not having it be confirmed but those are all like his personal photos from instagram he really likes strawberries so the strawberries mm -hmm. are, yeah, strawberries, yeah. <laughs> strawberries are good well no but i could yeah. but you could totally see people saying like my phone is totally personalized and my components are personalized yeah. Yeah. i see that as well not too. only is the os but the you know, every component of the hardware is furthermore there. you'll see people who make components that don't actually do anything but snap into that square and have like a uh, beer bottle opener or like <laughs> <laughs> like they're gonna do all these I'm dumb not sure sort the of magnet things. Is that strong, Rob. <laughs> still, you know. So but yes, I think it's great. Right. I'm excited about it. Although or maybe but I, like yeah. a little uh, nook hook. Yeah, like, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, like carabiner kind of thing. Uh -huh. But I'm the guy who gets excited about new technology. So whatever. I mean, I'm I'm already an aura apologist. So. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully, hopefully it uh, it extends a little bit further. I mean, they said what Port Puerto Rico by the end of this year ish. So yeah. Yeah. they have plans to move along with this. Can you guys help me convince my boss to let me go to Puerto Rico when this thing comes out? 
Because that would be a nice little one-two, like hanging out on the beaches, playing with this new modular smartphone. I have to put this through its paces. We need to go to the beach with this phone. Yeah, we need to go we to need the We need to see if the sand gets in the, the crevices and <laughs> all that. We need to go swimming yeah, exactly. with it. Right, yeah. Just to make sure. Will there be waterproof modules? Well, oh, like, just, yeah. just go. The, the, the list. Question. Endless. Endless. Yeah. I'm excited. There we go. Project Dara. Awesome stuff. Maybe next time you'll actually um, not be sick. And yeah. then you can play with it and let us know what you think from there. But that's that's great. God. You are one step ahead of us. Exactly. I I only hoped to see it at, at I.O. And they didn't. They only showed it on stage. They didn't really have it wandering about. So uh, there we go. They make modules with legs so they could like the, oh, like the cartoons with the like phones, it. you know, with mm -hmm. the arms. Or cat legs so yeah, that when you drop it, it always yeah. lands on its feet. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, take a break and thank our first sponsor of today's episode. This episode is brought to you by Hip Chat Plus. How is your team communicating? Are they using you know a variety of email, IM, texting, cloud storage, document sharing apps? Uh, Hip Chat puts everything in one place and is designed specifically for business. Hip Chat Plus is IM. It's video chat. It's document sharing, screen sharing. Uh, system updates, code sharing, and it's all integrated into one simple platform. Email is too slow. Meetings get sidetracked. Regular IM doesn't work well for groups. That's what, where HipChat comes in. HipChat Plus keeps your team in sync, and it works from any device, no matter where you are. And the best part is that HipChat integrates with the top developer tools like GitHub, Jira, Zendesk, and more. Just go to their site. You can check out the 57 services that HipChat plays nice with. HipChat brings your entire project and team communications together. HipChat is easy to set up, fun to use, and it makes your team super productive. Uh, check it out for yourself. We're using it here in Twit. I got my invitation uh, for for another HipChat uh, room just the other day, and uh, you know it's it's just it's a great tool. It's fantastic for big te for teams uh, like we have here at Twit. So uh, you should really check it out. Get your team on the same page. In seconds, uh, you can try HipChat Plus for free. No credit card is required. Visit hipchat.com slash allaboutandroid. Then you can click on start chatting to sign up. Then invite a few team members and all the features are free for 30 days. After the free trial, you can always stick with the freemium version. And uh, remember that that's hipchat.com slash allaboutandroid. For the first 100 signups, HipChat is going to extend their 30 days free trial to 90 days. Uh, so get in there quick. HipChat, your team, your project in sync instantly. We thank HipChat for their continued support of All About Android and the Twit Network. Thank you, guys. All right. Got a lot of hardware, cool hardware. Let's check it out. <laughs> I like that qualifier. We got a lot of hardware. We got cool hardware. Cool hardware. Cool. Well, we've got some our, some actual it's, hardware. It's our and new then segment. Some, like, cool, cool hardware. hardware. <laughs> Deal with it. Yeah. All right. Well, just to lead things off, we got some hardware that actually exists uh, from the company whose name I cannot pronounce. And I'm so Jason's going to show Xiaomi. Yeah. So when I point at you, you do it. Oh, we're doing this thing. This bit again. Okay. Xiaomi. In unveiled a few cool things this week. Uh, the new Xiaomi. 5.7 inch Mi Note for around $370 off contract. They described it themselves as the most epic flagship device of the year. Epic. Uh, it's got a 5.7 inch full HD display, Snapdragon 801, 3 gig of RAM, 13 megapixel rear facing camera, uh, 3 millimeter bezel, it's very narrow, uh, 24 bit slash 192 kilohertz lossless audio playback. It's running KitKat. Mm -hmm. uh, so there you go. Um, and that's on sale on January 27th for the Chinese market. So Which is what Xiaomi does. Yeah, so. exactly. Um, then there's the Xiaomi. Mi Box Mini, a media streamer that's the size of a power charger yet packs a quad-core Cortex-A7 processor to support 1080p video playback, one gigabyte of RAM, four gigabyte of storage, cool. and you can pre-order on January 20th for the Chinese market. And this has got me, this is cool. Yeah, four I, gigs of storage. I wonder how prohibitive that is. Yeah, it's not but look very how much, small but, that I mean, is. I think it's tiny. It looks like it's just it's like a little power charger. block. That's yeah, about all it is. Those folks at that Xiaomi are doing a good job. If you ask me, if you're in China, <laughs> go ahead and point at me. They're one a company time. to watch. Who? Well, they did take Xiaomi. a lot of Google people. <laughs> Yeah, it's yeah. true. <laughs> Hugo Barra, the the prime kind of name that's that's over there. Um, have you had a chance to play around with any Xiaomi hardware? I realize it's few and far between coming across their devices here in the states. No, but. and well, part of the reason is just because I 
I'm struggling to really see the point of, of calling it in when it's, it's a overseas only product. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but you know, I'm, I'm hoping one day to get my hands on something. I'm hoping at least, you know, when I get to Barcelona for MWC that I'll be able to kind of play around with a couple of them and check out the, the OS and everything. Um, yeah, we, is, um, is, we, I was going to say, it is kind of awful to see this stuff come out like the, like the, the, the Mi, Mi Box Mini, like, oh, I want that, but you'll never get it because it's only in China. Yeah, but you can get it. There, there yeah. are ways to get it and it's inexpensive. I mean, we got a, a Mi 4 True, you here and yeah. we reviewed it on the show and we reviewed it on Before You Buy here in the network. I actually have it at my desk. If yeah. I had thought ahead, I would have brought it out here. Um, and yeah, their, their products are very interesting. Um, you know, just the, the low cost factor versus kind of the the style that comes with the device yep. it's just uh it's it's an interesting company and they are what the third largest uh smartphone uh you know manufacturer in the world already uh primarily because they serve the chinese market so well um and there's speculation that they're going to be entering the u.s market soon so some at some point yeah, yeah. I, I hear I hear back and forth on that. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I, I hear that <laughs> it might happen, and then I, and then I, you know, have read other things that are like, yeah, if that's going to happen, it's going to be a few years down the line. So I would love to see it. I just don't know how that fits into their, their plans. I mean, I guess nobody does. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, interesting devices, nonetheless. Um, uh, let's see here. Okay, so that's all we have for real hardware. Let's talk about rumors. Uh, <laughs> No more cool. It's not, that time, it's not that time of the year yet, guys. It's it's not hardware. Listen, Florence, hardware it is time. always time for rumors. <laughs> it is every time. Right now, what time is it? It is time for rumors. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I meant real hardware. <laughs> oh, right. Exactly. She's, there you go. She's validating, Listen, I, yeah. validating the fact that we're talking <laughs> about rumors. We always feel a little bad about bringing rumors. Thank <laughs> <up>. you. <laughs> <laughs> we're like, fine, fine. Uh, you know, and what better, uh, you know, piece of hardware, uh, sought after, future looking piece of hardware than the Samsung Galaxy S6. Details are leaking, as they usually do about this time of year, on the next device. Total Rumorville, I, I kind of compiled a little list here. One rumor says yes to metal and glass casing design. Another says yes, kind of. It's not going to be a full metal unibody design. It's going to be a metal frame with glass panels, similar to the iPhone 4, the Nexus. Was it the iPhone 4 or the iPhone 5? And the Nexus 4 with glass on the front and back. I don't remember. Uh, which I'm not going to get because I drop phones. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, let's see here. That also actually means non-removable battery. That would be a big deal for the for the it Galaxy was. S. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that's one big key feature that people like that yeah. phone for. Uh, some are even saying, and I totally don't buy this, wraparound elements, glass elements on both sides, similar to what we see on the Note Edge, both sides instead of one side, which I suppose would make the Note Edge kind of a test uh, to see how, you know, it could be implemented into their flagship. I just, I don't buy that one. Nope, uh, nope, too soon. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. No, these are always a lot of fun because we talk about these things and then a year later, every once in a while I go back and, and look at the notes, usually what I'm doing the best of, and I realize just how wrong almost everything is. Uh, Touch-based fingerprint reader as opposed to the slide method that curr they currently have. I can see that. I can see that. They have to. Yeah. They have to compete with Apple. Yeah, that's that's their big competitor in the market. It's not so much the other uh, Android OEMs as it is. Do you that's think that the, the their approach with fingerprint is is how do I phrase this? Like, it, yes, they have to compete with Apple. They already have a fingerprint reader, which I, you know, personally, it worked OK for me. I know a lot of people eh. have a problem with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> eh. Florence says, eh. Come on, you're on transit. You're holding on. Bart is swishing back and forth, and you're like, it's, what Bart's is helping this you. Locking? Bart's helping you by swishing your finger back and forth on the. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, it, it worked most of the time for me, but I can understand why people don't like it. Uh, four gigs of RAM. I suppose I could kind of see it. It seems like three gigs is the, is the higher end nope. standard that we're seeing right now. So four gigs would be pushing it, I think. And I would guess that maybe one fifth of this is accurate. So there we go. I think that's a fair, I mean, th this point in the rumor world, yeah. I, mean, I think 20% is, is yeah. You know, yeah so there we go. We'll that's see. That's the S5. Get excited yeah, about it. It's only, uh, gosh, what is it? Like a month and two weeks away from MWC, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Where they usually announce it. So it's true. See, so um, it is rumor time. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's totally it's rumor under, time. Yeah. yeah. Build see? up to MW uh, Mobile World Congress, which nowadays is kind of like, 
a, the, one of the biggest deals when oh, it comes yeah. to smartphones. Well, well, speaking stuff. of Mobile World Congress, uh, a new press invite went out uh, that hints that the next HTC One might be unveiled at Mobile World Congress. Um, the M HTC One M9, or whatever it's going to be called, um, is expected to be there with some rumored specs of a quad HD display, Snapdragon 810, uh, 3 gig of RAM, 20 megapixel rear-facing camera, and our friends over at GreenBot has, have a leaked pic of, uh, of what potentially might be That's the next it. HTC One That's M9. Not it. That's not it. Scroll down, <laughs> scroll down. There, there it go. is. There it is. <laughs> yeah, there's okay. another one below that. Yep. So you are an HTC One M8 user. Do yes. these uh, do these picks kind of make you looking forward to the next one or? Yeah. 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 You know, I always uh, you know. So first of all, uh, the HTC One was our phone of the year last year for Greenbot and PC World collectively, uh, Android phone, I should say. Um, so you know, we were already kind of really liked what they put out uh, design wise. I really felt that the iPhone Six. And six plus even really resemble the the HTC One. Like it's just you know when I'm on public transit and I'm looking at people's phones because that's something I do because that's what I do for a living. I mm -hmm. look at phones. Uh, I sometimes I'll see an iPhone. I'm like, is that a is that a HTC One? No, no, it's an it, it's a copycat. It's an iPhone copycat. You know that sort of thing. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Yeah. Well, it's probably safe to say with Mobile World Congress coming up that we'll find out. And yeah. we'll see if these rumored yeah. specs are what they would be. I mean, yes. the, the HTC One phone has been a phone that I've always envied from afar. I've never actually used one or had one, but mm -hmm. like every time I see someone who's got one, I'm like, oh, let me see. And I like that, you know, like the, I think they're, they've really stepped up their design recently, you know, so. Um, oh, and speaking of durable phones, by the way, I've dropped this thing so many times and it is dented, but because it's aluminum, it's just like, it, it looks like a car dent and the glass has been totally fine. It's, uh, yeah, it's personality. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like a scar or a tattoo. Yeah, I just really appreciate that it like still has not shattered in pieces after uh, how much abuse I've put it through. I would, just, I would just totally loaded. appreciate that too. <laughs> I would say, let's loan it to Jason and see how long it lasts. <laughs> <sighs> see what I can do to the HTC One M8. <laughs> The phone Drop shatterer. It. Yes. The, yes. The shatter whisperer. <laughs> uh, all right. So, yes, obviously, you're probably, you know, fans of the show, you guys are going to hear more and more about Mobile World Congress as we ramp up and we get yeah. these invites and all that kind of stuff and news leaks out and who knows what's true and everything. But, uh, yeah, a lot of rumor stuff coming up. I have a good feeling. Uh, but we can talk about something that isn't rumor because we have it here. Thanks to Jason Cleanthus here at the Twit Studio who bought... The Gear VR. Jason has the Note 4. It exists. It exists. It's a real thing. It's not a unicorn. Yep. Uh, there's that. the Note 4 attached on the front, right? The Note The Note 4 does not come with the... No. Yeah. <laughs> no, the Gear VR is $200. Note 4 uh, does not <laughs> is not included for $200. <laughs> uh, but, you know, and you've got your little focus, uh, focus dial on the top. You got on the side here a little touch pad, which I'm not going to press because th there's actual stuff going on on the inside right now. Oh a little my. back button right there. You've oh, got so the volume touch, on the side. So the touch pad lets you control the phone. Yes. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> well, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, is it is it hot? Like, how does it feel right now in your hands? Fine. No, this is cool hardware. Uh, so this is, <laughs> thanks, thanks, Ron. Temperature wise. <laughs> uh, you know, the phone is warm. I wouldn't say that it's hot. It's warm to the touch? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I actually used this for about 20 minutes earlier today. Like, <laughs> And I looked, I'm sure, kind of funny uh, <laughs> with this thing strapped to my head. And I will tell you, I put it on. Jason uh, queued up the demo, which I think is queued up right now. Is that right? So, Ron, you can go ahead and oh, do it. Oh, is this where we're going to live on. demo it? Oh, yeah. Oh, so wait, don't touch the touchpad until I okay. tell you. Are we Iron sure? Man demo or? What's that? I, is that the Iron Man demo? I, so, I demoed it at IFA, and they showed us some like Tony Stark thing. But oh I'm yeah, if that's um, no. So this is not the Iron Man. Uh, sorry, I, I forgot about the audio. I had to get the audio. Now let's let's be reminded what happens when I live demo things. By yeah, the way. just watch you, the right side. You right. get yep. uh, yeah. you get pretty excited, Ron. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, which one? It's on the side. Okay. This ta it takes three people to use this, by the way, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, no, so this is a demo that kind of shows off. It's like a demo of the demos, right? There's yeah. all these things on the inside. Uh, so go ahead and tap and resume. Okay. Now what do I do? Look around. 
Whoa. Don't tap the side, though. Okay. Look down. Whoa. Uh huh. Gosh. Uh, yeah. So I, I put this on. I don't, I'm not sure what I'm expecting. Like I, I Whoa. haven't, I haven't played much with, <laughs> with Oculus myself. It was in the studio. I didn't really get a chance to play with it myself. Um, so this is one of my first experiences, aside from cardboard, uh, with like immersive VR. I gotta say, it Whoa. sucked me in. It is really cool. Yeah, you got shadow. That's that is so that's cool. Moments of connection. Uh, of yeah, it's, it was pretty great. Um, ah, there are people. Oh yeah, so so now you're in the middle of this room, with like a Native American tribe, okay. and just look all around. You know, behind oh, you. Look at the kids. Everything. It's it's crazy, man. It like puts you in the middle. So and Samsung, of course, has their 360 degree camera that they teased, I think, a month or two ago. And uh, so a lot of these that you're seeing right now were recorded with that. Whoa. And it gets you, I don't know, it just puts you right in the middle of this experience. This is Cirque du Soleil. That woman right there will like talk to you and be like, oh, look up. Uh, <laughs> whoa, whoa. There, see, 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 you gotta look up. You're looking at her, you gotta look up. Uh, what happened when you looking. look back at her? Well, you know, that it's- <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she broke, like, yes. How immersive is it? Uh, you know, it's not it's not interactive. This this is an interactive, of course. It's just you looking around in these different areas. Well, regardless, it's freaking cool. It is. Um, okay, I want to get to the the movie theater thing because I think that's like one of the cooler things. Go to the multi screen. How do I do that? Okay, yeah. the back back button is up at the top, so hit okay. that. Back. Okay. And then Egg exit, and then tap. Yeah, there you go. Okay. You're getting it. Oh, it needs oh, to no. cool down, man. Ah. All right. I asked about heat. I Cooling know. Down, man. Oh, uh, it was sitting there for a while. Is it hot now? How's it doing? No, now? it is not. It is warm it's, to it's the warm. touch, but it is not hot. I would not categorize it as hot. Okay, so Jason. Uh, I want to know if it burns your face off, and that would make really good TV. I'm just saying. This one. All right, so this is cinema mode. So you, when you watch movies, you can have a virtual cinema that surrounds you, and I know that sounds cheesy. But in a strange way, it's super convincing because there's light effects that bounce off of like the seats that surround you. In in one of them, you're on the moon watching on a big screen, and it's reflecting off the moon rocks that surround you. It Isn't sound it distracting though, like to be on the moon. No, watching. well, okay, maybe on the moon. But there's there's one that's like the movie theater. There's another one that's like a living room theater, really? so like a house theater. If you really wanted to do that, oh, wow. okay. So it puts you in there, and when you've got it in 3D mode. You feel like you're in a movie theater. It's it's just dist as distracting as being right. in a movie theater, I'd say. I was going to say, but I wouldn't want to be in right. a movie like, theater. Right. Like would you want to yeah. watch a whole movie like this? Eh. Look at the, the Where's the, the crying baby? Where's the people walking up and I down? I know. Where's the people pulling their phone out? out. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's what I want. I want like a yeah, a cell phone going off in the corner. And that's pretty cool. And you can yell at them and tell them to stop. Um Oh, this is cool. It's interesting. Now, can you go oh, to the, the bathroom? Projector. <laughs> you can, Florence. I just don't think they put it inside the experience, thankfully. And Ron, don't do that. So, he, Ron is like feeling around his, his environment and he's finding a table, which is a little disappointing. Uh, I don't know. It's it's one thing to see a demo like this. It's another thing to put it on your on your face and experience it in 3D. I it's, will say that you see a little bit of pixelation, right? You see yes, the pixels. Yeah, yeah. It's not super duper sharp. Yeah. Uh, Creamy Corn Cobb in chat is saying, you know, it ends up being 720p. Um, which I, this, yeah, sounds about right. You do see the pixels, but you really see where this is where this is headed, and uh, I think it's pretty impressive, pretty cool stuff. Sign me up. Yeah. See, so there's another theater. Oh. You can go to the moon. Go to the moon. Go to the moon. Go to the moon. How do I go? I don't actually have Google Glass. Oh, there you go. Cool. There you go. Oh, that's cool. Although one disappointing thing about this is like when the when the movie's reflecting, of course it's it's like reflecting off the rocks and stuff, but it's also reflecting oh. off the stars. So so off the rocks, like that would make sense, right? The screen in front of all these rocks, so it's you know going to get kind of li lighter and darker, or whatever, depending on what's on the screen. How do I get but out? the stars in the sky were were uh, reacting as well. I don't know. It's pretty cool. Um, here's my problem. Here's my problem with this. Uh -huh. Is that every time I look at something, I want to look at what's going on back there. Yeah. And I'm like constantly doing that. So. Well, this one. Okay. Tap that. 
and you end up oh, with that's a. Weird. Oh, oh, that's even happened? freaky. Oh, that, that that canceled the Chromecast Aww. streaming. Aww. What it, it's a pass through camera, so then you end up seeing through the camera. So I can just see life. So you see everything else because otherwise you're <laughs> you're blocked in this thing. So I could just leave this on and put pass through camera on and then just use yeah. my phone. Yeah, there you go. All right, one one more thing about this before we sorry. move on. I'm Marlon sorry. Marlon on Google Plus uh, pointed pointed this out to me, which I think is a really good to kind of stress about this product. Uh, Nick DiCarlo was VP and GM of Immersive Products and VR at Samsung. Uh, basically said about this product, he said, if this is not a gigantic hit right away, we shouldn't be disappointed by that. The criteria that we're evaluating our launch by is, do the people who bought it like it? We don't even really care how many we sell. It's about do the people who bought it like it? Is it comfortable? Do they feel like it's compelling? Is it something they're showing to their friends? And that's the key goal from this, which is learning, which kind of explains a little bit about, I think, you know, there were there were criticisms definitely on the show about, oh, well, this isn't going to be too viable because it's just the Note 4, which, I mean, is true, right? Limit it to one device. Dude. You're limiting your audience. T taking it off is a trip. Yeah, welcome back to reality. <laughs> Uh, so but Gear, but Gear very VR cool. is I'm sorry, Gear VR is uh, Samsung's glass <laughs> to an extent, right? It's just this experimental gadget yeah, I suppose that they so. want to test out and and see if this is a market that they could tap into and and yeah. get into and right. It's not a nice. hardware analog to glass yeah. necessarily. They yeah. don't do the same no. things, but it's a similar experiment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Their, their approach, their rationale for doing it is very similar. That's yeah. a good point. It's, and it's, it makes sense to only go after the Note 4 users because that is a hell of a powerful phone. Yeah. And, you know, I bet any but the people who use that phone already, like, love the form factor and are willing to, you know, maybe pay out of contract for it. So why mm -hmm. not tack on a VR? Yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, if you already have the Note, what, it's $200. Yeah. Uh, you know, so it's a $200. Uh, it feels like a real product. I mean, like it's a well constructed. I it mean, is. Yeah, it, it is very well yeah, constructed. Yeah. No, totally. This isn't cardboard. You know, it's it's done. It's made in cooperation with uh, with Oculus. So that's cool. You know, um, this is you cool. You get all the Oculus content. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It wants to cool down. It says that it needs to cool down. Oh, you should put it in the refrigerator. That's what I do on hot days. I put all my tech at the fridge. <laughs> I know that's weird. I know. That's Inside weird, the fridge. It gets really hot oh. where I live. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, inside the fridge. In the Bay Wait, you're in the, are you in the Bay Area? Where? where yeah, I'm in the very outskirts. Yes. <laughs> uh, I've never had to do that before. I know. Put yeah, my, no, put geez. my tech in the. In the um, fridge. This is fascinating. This is yeah. this is. I mean, this is as cool as this is cooler than cardboard. Yeah, I know. You Some know? people are just saying, "Nah, just get cardboard." It's no, no. Cardboard, cardboard is cool. You get 3D effect. The immersion is lost on cardboard. Yeah, and the the relaxed kind of uh, style it, you know with cardboard it's it's cardboard so it's not the most comfortable thing you're holding it up the whole time yeah it's different it, there are definitely different levels uh so getting cardboard is like introduction this is kind of taking it to the next level and i'm sure oculus when they come out with their next you know release is going to be like uh top of the heap or you know uh, yeah. higher up than this so. this is a cool entry point though i mean if you're mm -hmm. into vr totally if like this is your thing like yeah. if you and you want to be bleeding edge i would be ve for 199 i'd be very happy with this purchase they have a demo on there where you're where um a 3d camera was placed in the middle of this guy i can't remember the artist's name this musician's um home studio oh, cool. and so he's sitting at the piano with a microphone like setting it up getting ready to record something his dog's asleep just kind of out down on the floor, and I mean, for me, like this, that stuff fascinates me. Yeah. I felt like I was there, like you know, you're there watching him kind of do this performance for you, and it was just yeah. super engaging. It just pulls you right in. That's cool. So very cool stuff. Problem is, you look like an idiot doing it. Well, as we all saw me doing it for there five you go. minutes. Yes. So there you go. All right. Well, but that's okay. It's not about them. It's about you. Well, is it? Well, <laughs> experiencing it. <laughs> the experience. <laughs> Comfort of your own home. I actually chat room asking if subway. it's better than the Nintendo Virtual Boy. I never actually used the Virtual Boy. I yeah, the Virtual Boy was pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. So yes. I gotta imagine it was. So. All right. All right. Cool. There it is. Look at that. Oh, that's see, Leo. that looks normal to me. See, that's, that's what Leo is. always looks like. Right. That's 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 everyday Leo. Mm -hmm. All right. Cool. Well, that was a uh, Samsung uh, VR. I'm impressed. Gear VR. Gear VR. Very cool. Thank you, Jason, for sticking around nice. to let us show that off. And here's the note as well. Oh, yes. You'll need that. Yes. I'm sure you're going to be playing with this well into the evening. <laughs>
But uh, that was very impressive, as is impressive Squarespace, who we want to thank for sponsoring this episode of All About Android. Squarespace recently recently launched the latest version of their platform, Squarespace 7. The completely redesigned interface makes it even easier to create your own professional website or online portfolio. And I got to say, when I was at Revision three years ago and they told mm-hmm. us Squarespace was going to start sponsoring the shows and they, they gave me a blog to try it out, back then it was awesome and Squarespace 7 is even awesomer. Uh, my, my personal site is still running on Squarespace and I've never looked back. And here's why you'll love Squarespace. Live editing on one screen. Making changes is clearer, simpler, and more intuitive. With Squarespace 7, there's no more toggling between the site manager to the preview mode. Plus, you can see how your changes will look on tablets and mobile devices. Speaking of mobile, with the Portfolio, Note, Metris, Metric, and Blog mobile apps, you can make changes from anywhere. The Note and Blog apps are also available on Android for all you Android users. Google Docs integration makes it so easy for Squarespace to work with Gmail, Google Docs, Sheets, Drive, and Calendar. Plus, Squarespace 7 can easily link branded email accounts to your domain. They've got, they've got 14 new designs, giving you over 30 to choose from. And a, a brand new f- uh, feature with Squarespace 7, which I think is awesome, is cover pages. Choose from 10 new templates. You can add these to any existing Squarespace site. It's perfect for creating quick landing pages for your brand, personal identity, or to promote a new product. They've got integrated access to Getty Images. For just $10 each, you can pick from thousands of professional Getty Images and use them on your site. The developer platform is used by some of the world's top digital agencies. If you're a developer, you can customize your site exactly how you want it. You'll have access to the same coding platform Squarespace uses for its own site. E-commerce is available for all subscription plan levels. Social media is built in. You can link your Squarespace site to all your social media accounts, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, Tumblr, YouTube, Pinterest, and many more. In case you haven't figured it out yet, it's incredibly easy to use. But if you do get to a point where you need some help, Squarespace has live chat and email support 24 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's inexpensive. It just starts at $8 a month, and Squarespace takes care of hosting, so you don't have to. Plus, you get a free domain name if you sign up for one year. And get this. Listeners of All About Android, you can start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code about Android to get 10% off and show your support for all about Android. To begin using Squarespace 7, existing customers can go to the settings tab to activate all the new features. We thank Squarespace for their support of all about Android. Squarespace, start here, go anywhere. I love Squarespace. It's so good. They make they make it all easy. I can tell you I the number it. of people who come to me and be like, hey, I need a website. I'm doing yeah. this or whatever. I'm like, dude, Pretty just easy. go to Squarespace. It's like you don't need to code. Like the days of knowing HTML. I have, hated those days. Well, I, or, I, or, like, or the Dreamweaver days. Yeah. But you like, always oh, had, I totally know what I'm doing. No, I don't. It was funny because you always had like you were the go-to. Like, oh, I'm trying to get, can you help me whatever? I haven't yeah. gotten anybody calling me and ask for help after I tell them to use Squarespace. That's how <laughs> easy it is to yeah, use. Yeah, they, so. they keep making it easier. Check it out. Squarespace.com. Thank you, Squarespace. All right, let's uh, let's dig into some apps. Dig in, yum. All right, talking about talking. <laughs> there you go. Talking about Google talk. Translate finally pushed its much anticipated update that enables a few cool key features, and these are very cool if you haven't had a chance to play with them. First, image translation, almost identical to how WordLens, uh, which was acquired by Google, works. Mm-hmm. So basically, you just point your phone at a sign, and it will, as you can see here in the video, translate it pretty instantaneously, which is kind of freaky. Um, and then second... Uh, An update to conversation flow that enables you to converse with someone in another language by using the app as your translator in both directions. So you don't need to tap the mic to switch between talkers or whatever. It just flows with the conversation, which uh, is quite fascinating. And Hmm. we're going to try it live now here. Uh, Sure, although I'm not really – hold on. Let's see if I can – never mind. I don't know. I'm not going to lower the the brightness. What language is it? So English to Spanish? Oh, Oh. Speaking to the vice next. Okay. You're, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Oh, this, so is, this is the this is the onboarding. Okay. Uh, there All you right. go. Great. Cool. All right. Hello. Hola. Oh wait a minute. No, that's right. You got to you got to do it to the side. Hola. Hello. Yeah. See. So you you hand it back and forth, right? So one person would have. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, phone. <laughs> Yeah. I'm really sorry to do this to you, phone. Um, I don't know what I'm doing right now. (laughs) 
Adios. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm so really, you get the this, picture. This update to Google Translate really makes me want to travel abroad uh -huh. to watch people using it. Because that the, the <laughs> passing of the phone and the flipping and everything. But that's yeah. Sad. You wonder if in in like real life use, if people would just be like, "What are you but, doing? Yeah. Like, put your phone down." When you're asking where the bathroom is yes. in Italy, are they really going to want to? You know. But yeah. that said, that's pretty impressive. It's a pretty it's a pretty cool update. So okay, uh, I I get the impression, Florence, that you are a world traveler. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Are you going to be using uh, uh, Google Translate going forward? Yeah. Um, I actually also speak fluent Romanian, so I'm very curious to see how that is going to work uh, with more, with diff Ooh. not as popular languages. Um, and I was thinking about maybe trying it out when I go to Barcelona, because last year it was an interesting predicament sort of using Google Translate to talk to people because I understand Spanish pretty well because I already have the basis in Romanian and they're both Latin languages and similar words and conjugation. But I don't have enough confidence to speak back to people. That's that's sort of like right. the issue. That's always so my curious, failure too, yeah. Yeah, I'm curious to see how this is going to help me with that confidence issue, you know, that I need to just be like, I am a scrappy American and I don't speak Spanish that well. I'm sorry. What my you? phone is going to help me. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I have to imagine if you're using your phone to translate for you, a little bit of that confidence is just like chipped away. Yeah, it it's is. Like, but oh, you know, I here. had a conversation with a guy actually. Um, this guy was just trying, the security guard started talking to me at the Samsung keynote last year. He just, I was just sitting there filing a story and he would not leave me alone. So I had to like use translate to just be like, kind of like, hi, I'm busy. <laughs> Google translate, go away. <laughs> go away, please. <laughs> like, how do I say this nicely? <laughs> uh, Romanian, Romanian is uh, one of the options. You have to download uh -oh. the pack. Uh-oh. But we have it here. We do have it here. So let's find out. Uh, oh, so no. here we go. So let's do <laughs> let's do English to Romanian. Uh, let's see here. And right. I'm, I'm hoping All right, so. that the studio speaker is loud enough that we'll hear your reply. Um, where's the shoe store? I was going to say, leave me alone. I'm working. Oh, okay. Yeah. Leave me alone. I'm working. Oh. <laughs> That's the perfect translation. Uh, yep. <laughs> what? I'm Oh, do I have to say that back? No, I'm way too shy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to get you to speak Romanian. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, so if the show involved drinking, then absolutely. But <laughs> Well, there's no reason that it shouldn't. No, I don't want to offend any other Romanians out there with my poor Americanization of the Romanian language. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's better than what I know, which is yeah, nothing. Yeah. Although I, I had to say... That didn't sound very good. Was it pretty easy to understand? Like that sounded yeah, extremely robotic. Yeah, it totally. That's something my mother would say to me. <laughs> awesome. Uh, very cool, though. Cool features, uh, f particularly for the traveler. And let's see here. Finally, oh yes. Okay, Monument Valley. Who all here has played Monument Valley? I, I still have not. You still have not. I know. Did you play? Yeah. Did you like it, Florence? Uh, played ish. I got a got a sidetrack with some other games. It's easy so. to do. There's so many good games right now uh -huh. on Android, and they're coming out fast and furious. So I know. I love it every day on the Google Play Store. Oh, I know. It's wow, look how but... regular. It's a regular <laughs> thing. No, it's true. Every day I go on, and I'm like, "What's new today?" Because you know, it's like part of your job. Uh -huh. that, so. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> yes, I know that well. Uh, well, Monument Valley, fantastic game. I loved it. I uh, finished it. Tremendous hit on mobile last year, both Android and iOS. The developers at Us2 uh, of the game are being pretty transparent as to what that means from a sales and distribution perspective and some interesting insight into what they made and everything. The game, of course, is $3.99 doesn't have in-app purchases. They specifically chose to go the direction of paying upfront and then making the gameplay experience open, you know, without any nagging or anything like that. Play sales were 12% of the overall take. iOS, 71%. Play revenue, 13.9% of the overall uh, take there. And by the way, revenue is $5.8 million. Jeez. Uh, they had 2.4 million uh, sales. So that was, that was, those are important numbers that I didn't include in my notes. So thank you for showing that. Uh, play revenue, 13.9%.
iOS 81.7%. The Android version did release after iOS, though not very far after. I think it was like a month or something. So in essence, iOS made nearly six times as much Jeez. as the Android version of the game. And as you know, or maybe you didn't know, they had an expansion. I think it's called Lost Shores. They specifically, or Forgotten Shores, there we go. They specifically mm -hmm. chose not to release this on Android. Uh, and I think, you know, part of the reason was because <laughs> not as worth their time. I mean, they made so much off the iOS version of this game in, in comparison to Android. Uh, what does this say for making money on Android for, for developers of, of games and just developers in general uh, versus the iOS store? Is this confirmation that Android is, a, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time developing and not make nearly as much? What do you guys think? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, okay, honestly, though, I've, I've spoken to developers and a lot of them have, have said like, well, why would I go after Android? The revenue system on iOS is better. Mm. I think the biggest complaint about uh, iOS, though, is that it takes forever to get your app approved. And that's why um, for a while, lots of people were flocking to Android to sort of like release their app and get it out there first. But Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I think Apple is a lot better at getting uh, developers to to kind of, you know, bring their app to their platform. Yeah, right. I mean, and and the thing is, like, looking at the looking at the numbers, you know, like I, iOS accounting for eighty one point seven percent and Google Play thirteen point nine. If this had come out a year ago, what would that Google Play number have looked like? It would have probably been less than thirteen point nine. And so, there, you know, this I'm extrapolating, but so therefore, if this game came out a year from now, there's a good chance that that Google Play number could increase because we've been talking about how iOS has a larger install base and an app, uh, app store environment that's been around for longer. So, therefore, you're going to have more volume. Um, and Google Play is continuing to be a growing uh, marketplace. Mm -hmm. And I think that if they ran this same analysis at the end of the year, I think Google Play will, you know, its share will increase naturally because that's how these things go. I mean, it's a growing place. So. And I wonder, I wonder if there's just just guessing here. I wonder if there's any any kind of angle, way to look at this where you know maybe one platform is has a stronger audience for free to play well, within app versus another platform being you know stronger for uh, paying upfront for a game and, and not having that kind of stuff. Well, I think it's fascinating is going back to the graph. If you look here on their official sales, you know, like 1.7 million uh, units uh, purchased on iOS. 296,000 purchased on Google, 92,000 purchased on Amazon paid, but 407,000 on Amazon free. Like that, I mean, that that's staggering, you know, if you look at that differential. Um, you know, so it's, it says a lot about what people, you know. Yeah. So. Oh, uh, and I'm, I'm being pointed out in the chat, and thank you, MacFile, for, for posting this. I guess Forgotten Shores was released on Android. I guess it went to the Amazon App Store initially, and then it got released, and I totally missed that. For some reason, I remember hearing when it released that they, they were uh, bypassing the Forgotten Shores expansion, but obviously I was wrong. Yeah, no, there was a little drama around that. Even I remember that. Yeah, but... <laughs> Eventually, I guess they did. Um, yeah, interesting. You know, and I think for, in, I love that we're seeing developers kind of be upfront about how they're making money and just the fact that you can be an indie developer and make this kind of money, which, you know, maybe for a larger organization isn't that much. But when you're talking about a small team of, of people yeah. who are doing this because they're passionate about it and, you know, they're trying new things and everything, that's... That's so great that you can make a career out of this, that you can create a company just by making a good game with a solid team of your friends or, you know, your close connections. Uh, that That's encouraging. Uh, I do hope that that the situation improves on Android for developers. And I think we, we, talk, we talk a lot about it on the show because I think it's important. Otherwise, developers won't create content for the platform. Um, but I think experiences are different between, you know, between apps and between developers. Some yeah. developers... You know, like, much like a uh, Pocket Cast, right? Shifty Jelly. Um, yeah. You know, they, they would say the opposite. They would say they absolutely make a lot more on Android versus iOS. So I think it just depends on who you're asking. Uh, all right. We have an email. We do have an email. Email comes from Chris in Alexandria, Virginia. 
<coughs> who writes in about a topic we were talking about last week, I believe, and we were talking about before the show as well, mm -hmm. uh, to respond to the discussion about how phone phones and tablets slow down over time on episode 196, flash memory is actually damaged every time it's written to. Since operating systems are constantly doing this, reading and writing to cache, the memory degrades fairly quickly. The more bits that are degraded, the slower the overall performance becomes. Newer memory and operating systems try to spread out where they write and attempt to spread out the damage, but that merely delays the inevitable slowness. Steve Gibson can confirm or clarify this. And yeah, and I'm sure he would. And he would. And so would we. I mean, we talked about this. In fact, yeah. I thought we talked about it last week when we said that. But yeah, I mean, it goes back to the old uh, chalkboard analogy where, you know, every time you write on, you, you write in memory and then you erase it, there's still kind of a little bit of there, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and then the more you do it, the more you do it, the more it kind of gets harder to see and that sort of thing. Yeah. And then the analogy falls down. But uh, yeah, uh, and that's just the nature of it. And so now I've got a Nexus 7 from 2012 that's slow as molasses. That's only worth $5. So say <laughs> love yeah, that's how it goes. But man, when you get a new device and you first run it and it seems so smooth and, and so fast and everything, that that's probably why. But uh, yeah, it's it's noticeable, very noticeable. And then you go back to that device a year later or shelve a device and then go back to it that you know was so fast then. And yeah, yeah it's a different story. That is exactly why I sort of want to start a new thing of going back to phones after I've used them after a couple of months. Yeah. Just because, like, performance-wise, they're always perfect the minute they come out of the box. It's not until your 100th yep. app install that it really starts to show its age. Yep. Or, or not its age, but that it has its limitations. Right. No, completely agree. Uh, cool. Before we get into the arena, let's thank our final sponsor of today's episode, is legal zoom uh what is your top new year's resolution or do you have a top do you have just one is it getting your life organized <laughs> organizing your life where do you begin with that great place to start is protecting your family and a great way to take control of your family's future is making a will or living trust i did this a couple of years ago through legal zoom myself before i was even here at twit uh, so, you know, I've used LegalZoom and it was super easy. That's where LegalZoom can help you. There's no easier way to make sure your family is legally taken care of. Get your life organized. Uh, you know, that, that also means taking control of your financial affairs. So if you're thinking of starting a business or if you have one already, LegalZoom can help you form your business and provide the support that you need to run it successfully, you know. Um, for more than 10 years, LegalZoom has helped millions of people get the personalized attention that they need. If you'd like more help, they can connect you with an independent attorney in more states, but they're not a law firm. It's important to know that. Uh, but they are a big help in, uh, you know, getting you to to take, tackle these things that might seem intimidating, you know, trademark registration, uh, uh, you know, like, like I said, the last will and testament, living trust. Uh, I mean, there's just a ton of stuff that they can help you out with. Just check out their site and uh, and see for yourself. Don't let another year pass you uh, by before getting your life organized. Take control of it now. For legal help you can count on for your family or small business, go to LegalZoom.com, offer code AAA, and receive $10 off at checkout. Protect your family and protect your future at LegalZoom.com. We thank LegalZoom for their support of All About Android and the Twit Network. All right, what do you say we check in on the arena? So many enter, <laughs> but only one lives. Android Arena. <sighs> yeah. It came down. It, it yeah. got. It got closer than it I did. thought it, it would. It, it, it crept it closer would. and closer. I was rooting for Gina in her last arena. I was hoping she'd go out the win. But sometimes a ridiculous app gets the win. And this week, at least last week, uh, all about Android 196. Jason yeah. took the top spot with Ridiculous Fishing at 41% yes. of the vote, followed by my app, Power Button, Flashlight, Slash Torch for 39%. Which there have been updates on in the, in the, the week since, right? Many since, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been, it's been very active. A lot of debate. And then finally coming in third was uh, Bitcoin Wallet by Coinbase, uh, which yeah. got just 20% of the vote. So, Gina, so long. Thanks for the fish. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We'll have her back soon. But well, she's yeah. going to end up in the guest category. She is in the guest category yeah. now, yeah. But this is your first win of 2015. Yes. Congratulations. Feels good. Feels ridiculous. It feels, feels ridiculous. Good. It does, yeah. Uh, all right. So we've got three apps to show off today. We're going to start with Ron, and then Florence will show yours next. But Ron, you've got the floor. Go first. All right. So uh, I figured I started the year off with a uh, with a uh, 
Well, I ended the a year. Bang? With, I ended the year. Did with you a, drop your phone? No, I didn't. Oh. I, uh, I ended the year with a task switcher, and then I started the year with a flashlight app. And so, what better way to follow it up than a notepad? Um, but this one caught my eye. This is called Blue Note, and the reason why it caught my eye is because it is so material designy. It's not even funny. Uh, it is very, very pretty. Um, so it is free in the Android marketplace, and I'm gonna lower my this, my uh, brightness there so you can see it a little better. I'm still getting used to the Nexus 9, everyone, so bear with me. Um, but that said, uh, it is free in the Android um, in the Google Play market, but as you saw there, uh, every now and then you'll see a little ad pop up. They do have a premium version that you can buy in an in-app purchase. You can upgrade it within there, and I'm not connected to the Internet, but it's not a lot of money, and it gets rid of the ads, just so you know. But, um, but yeah, it is a straight-up notepad. Uh, with all the fun notepad things that you would expect. Um, you hit the button down here at the bottom, the little plus button down there, like very material design, and you could choose whether you want to start a list or a note. I'm just going to do a note. And when you go into a note, it's real simple. You can just put in a title. Uh, this is the title. And I can't type when I'm doing something. It's and then title. you can type whatever you want down here. Um, now you can change the color of the note. So in a fun material design kind of way, I can change what the top looks like. Um, you can add tags and you can, um, you can set your own tags. It comes with some already baked into the app. Um, I'm going to say this one is an idea, so I'm going to throw it into ideas. You can also uh, record a reminder. So you can set a, a date and a time that you want to be reminded of this um, of this note, and it will give you a notification to go back and, and take a look at it, which is kind of neat within there. Um, you can you can use Markdown and see what the Markdown preview will be if that's your if that's your uh, choice of how you want to type up your notes. A lot of people like to work in Markdown. Um, you can also switch to night mode if you're working, and that's available in the premium, uh, which I, f I haven't upgraded this as of yet. Um, and, of course, you can share it through all the various different um, sharing aspects within there. Um, when you finish it, you get this whole kind of rundown of all your of all your notes. Here is a list I did earlier where I just did a straight up, you know, kind of task to-do list. That is um, a list. Yeah, it is a list. Very similar. Um, again, I can change the color. So there you go. Um, now, of course, it's got um, all the standard kind of integrations that you would expect. You can uh, sync it with your Dropbox. Right, you can uh, export uh, your data, you can import your data, and it's just a handy, very light, easy to use notepad uh, list. If you don't live in the Google ecosystem, if you don't want to use Google Docs, if you don't want to use Keep, if for some reason you know the uh, something about Keep or something about Evernote or whatever annoys you, Blue Note is just a very independent, very light and simple uh, app that lets you do uh, what you need to do, which is just take notes and make lists. So there it is. So uh, Blue Note free in the Google uh, Google Play Market or Google Play Store. I can never remember what it's called. Play Store. Play Store. And you, you were um, like mashing them. That was a mashup. I was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's all, I've been doing this for too long. That's the problem. Um, and when you do get, uh, if you do upgrade to the premium mode, you can. It, it gets rid of the ads. It adds a calendar view, so you can view all your stuff by the dates that you've added in reminders and ads in that night mode. And they're going to be uh, adding more and more premium features as it goes along. So, uh, so there it is. Blue Note. Blue note. Yep. Excellent. If you just need material, more material design in your life, mm -hmm. that's what it's designed for. I imagine a lot of people do. Yep. Uh, all right, cool. Blue note, one word. Florence, I have your app installed, so I'll go ahead and, like, fumble around on it while you kind of talk about what you like about okay. it Okay. So oh, man. Uh, so <laughs> I... <laughs> Uh, did I, I didn't warn I, you about this, did I? Yeah, I just feel bad. You have to do that. Um, <laughs> oh, no, don't worry. Oh. I'm used to it. <laughs> Uh, I liked, I really liked Move It because um, what happened is, you know, I, like we said, I travel a lot and for work and, and for life and I take transit wherever I can, especially if I'm in a big city. And uh, I just found Google Maps wasn't working very well for that. So uh, I found that Move It just worked a lot better at uh, getting me places, helping me find alternate routes. I tried it out when I was in New York a couple of months ago and uh, it even has this a uh, little tab that lets you know if there are any service disruptions in any of the transit authorities in the area. Uh, it lets you sort of check for your destination by time, uh, by place, or, you know, yeah, it says you can request a car through Lyft if that's your thing. Um, I don't I, I just thought it was a really good transit app and just the utility of it is really helpful. So I figured I would... I would share it with the world. 
That's cool. Um, yeah. Definitely has kind of the, the blocky colors, like a, a little bit yeah. of the material approach as well there. Uh, excellent. So so do you use the trip planning aspect of it? I do, do you... when I leave the Bay Area, just okay. because I, I'm pretty, I kind of know this, I've lived here my whole life, so I kind of right. know how to get around. But in other places, oh my gosh, in New York, this was a huge, yeah, there you go, the service alerts with Muni, and I guess everything else is fine. I like how Rail and Bart own two different tabs. Just side note there. Uh, <laughs> anyway, Bart runs on a rail for those who don't know. Uh, yeah, it's just a really good uh, transit app. Try it out if you take trains a lot and you live in a really big city and the bus system tends to fail you. Nice. Um, yeah, particularly useful in uh, in the larger cities for sure. Um, not sure how much I would use it in Petaluma. Well, actually... <laughs> Oh, you have a know, bus system, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. I, I actually almost took the bus to Petaluma once a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> by the way. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yep. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was one of so, your so might have, Golden might Gate actually... Ferry or Golden Gate Transit System, whatever that is, that stops I'm in Petaluma. right there. I've never even Star heard of that. Wow. Added to my favorites. Look at that. Just because. Uh, cool. That is Move It, and it's actually spelled a little differently, M-O-O-V-I-T, all one word. Do a search for Move It. And it's free. Excellent app. Thanks for bringing that in. Um, I found a game right before the show because, yeah, it was a little, I was in crunch time. But thankfully, it was fun. And so I'm going to talk about it. It's called Piano by Yoki. So this is kind of, this is another one of those kind of style of games uh, similar to, I guess, Guitar Hero in, in that kind of vein of music, you know, plays. There's a little bit of, there's a little line and uh, things travel down. And as they, appear on the line, you have to kind of keep up with it. The thought here being that it allows you to play piano without knowing how to play piano. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to warn you right now, this is going to be a really hard game to play sideways, which is what I have to do when I show things off on here. But let's see here. Should I do uh, In Vogue? Free your yes. mind. No, do yes. California Dreaming. Yes. No, in Vogue. Do it. Do uh, it. I, I, All right. I'll defer. I think I think we have to do in Vogue. I'll defer uh, to our guest. Uh, just this once, Florence. Look, look, Ron, free your mind and the rest will follow. Uh, okay. No, yeah. All right. I just I just want you to know that. I'm gonna do beginner because I don't want to make too much of a fool of myself. Hopefully the audio is coming through. So it downloads on the fly, so it doesn't store all of these things on there. And all right, here we go. Kind of adds you Three, to Three, okay, two, one. This might be kind of hard. Go away. Ooh. <laughs> this is real. This is slightly painful. Yeah, it does hurt, doesn't it? <laughs> that's because I'm really bad. See, that's me freestyling. Um, okay, so you get a picture. I was playing Fur Elise, and honestly, I think Fur Elise actually translated a little bit better than Free Your Mind. And if I could get to the chorus, then maybe this would be a little more enjoyable. But um, so there's three different difficulty levels, beginner, then you got your, you know, intermediate and advanced. And as you kind of, you know, score high enough on one, then, then it encourages up. you to move up. And as you move up, you know, then you gain access to more songs and stuff like that. Um, this didn't sound that great, the In Vogue one. Uh, a little too much sustain, I would say, on the piano. However, you know, I had fun with Fur Elise, uh, which is kind of a, a boring song, so might might say a little bit, you know just kind of standard more than anything but it actually sounded like something <laughs> that last one just sounded like notes but that could have been my horrible playing oh here i'll show you real quick <laughs> oh man it's so hard to play sideways well if you miss a note it doesn't let you go until you play it that's because i'm on beginner yeah. if i was on intermediate uh, uh it, it actually keeps going and then you lose those points oh well, this sounds lovely Oh, oh, man. Okay, I'm going to stop. Oh, thank you, Brian. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Uh, anyways, it's kind of fun. You know, play piano without knowing how to play piano, and uh, it's a game at the same time. If you really like piano, yeah, maybe you'll like piano. But you'll... It's probably a tablet game a little better, maybe. Yeah, actually. Yeah. It probably would work yeah. a little bit better on the tablet. Or like maybe a Nexus 6? Uh, maybe. Shut up. <laughs> Go away, Ron. I don't need that kind of <laughs> attitude around here. Don't you know I lost a dear friend the other day? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Too soon, too soon? Yes. Really 
expensive friend at that. Uh, that's what it reminds me. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, hopefully it'll get taken care Jason, of. free your mind. Free your Nexus 6 and the rest and the will follow. The rest will follow. <laughs> You should just get a Moto G. It's only like 200 bucks. Uh, well, honestly, <laughs> I've actually considered like if if it can only be replaced, do I get the Nexus 6 again and drop, you know, an extra 100 or I think it's like what I'd be dropping 200 and some odd extra dollars on right. top of the 500 I get from my credit card or do I get the Moto X, the the current Moto X which was updated, you know, um, and uh, people seem to love it. It's made a lot of lists as far as best of uh, 2014. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I will see. But there we go. Uh, so anyways, I don't know why we're talking about my phone again. Let's stop talking about it. Uh, this week's arena, you can vote for your favorite app this week. Is it Blue Note? Is it Move It? Is it Piano by Yoki? Go to AAAPoll.com slash 197. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're playing. Oh, I, I thought Brian was just being funny. But That's no. awesome. <laughs> okay. Just go to AAAPoll.com slash 197. Let your voice be heard. Oh, hey. California dreams of Dora Wong on a winter's day. On a winter's day. Okay, you're good at this, Ron. See, I didn't, know you knew, I didn't know you know how to play piano. I don't. Uh, well, maybe you should. Getting into it. I didn't, I didn't know you were a Mamas and Papas fan, Florence, but apparently you are. Free living, man. <laughs> Stopped into a you church. <laughs> I passed along the way. Good job. Good job, Ron. Thanks, Thanks for uh, yeah. upping my score. No problem. Appreciate it. My pleasure. <laughs> All right. AAAPoll.com slash 197. On my knees. Place your vote. And I hope you enjoy those apps. Uh, Florence, really appreciate you coming on the show today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for having me remotely, and I promise next time I'll be in person. Okay, excellent. We will absolutely have you back again, and if you would like to come into the studio, even better. You know, of course we understand uh, when it's not possible, because, yeah. hey, Petaluma is not, like, right around the corner for most people. So. Like Sometimes. I said, you guys yeah. have a great Whole Foods. Oh, sure. You can, you know, stop on your way out of town and, and pick up some yeah. bread. <laughs> I don't yeah. know what... <laughs> Ice cream, right? <laughs> Whatever. Uh, yeah, no, it's awesome having you on the show. We'll definitely have you back when when you would like to come back. We're we're absolutely uh, stoked to do that. Tell people kind of where they can follow your work, what you're doing on the internet, if you have anything cool coming up, whatever you like. Uh, well, I've got a Dell. The new uh, Dell tablet is is on is a. Uh on my roster of things to review. So I'm currently working on that. Uh, you can find me at greenbot.com or pcworld.com. Uh, we are sister sites and I write for the Android portal. That's greenbot.com. Or as always, you can find me on Twitter at Oh That Flow. Oh That Flow. Yes. Excellent Twitter handle. Uh, cool. Well, thanks again, Florence. And uh, we'll have you back soon. We'll be in touch. Okay. And oh, and have fun at Mobile World Congress. Let us know what you see. I will. Uh, I'll bring you guys back something. I don't know. Some ham? Can yes, I some ham. Bring back yeah, some ham. On. Yes. Yes, please bring, yes. bring some Thumbs ham. Up. All right. If I go to jail, will you guys bail me out? Though? No. We will uh, not bail you out. You bring the ham. If no there, bailing if, out. Bring if there, the ham. If there's an app to bail you out, then maybe we can do something about it. You know, we'll play it by ear. Uh, thank you again. I'm jealous. I want to go oh, to Barcelona. I know. Me too. I think I we actually are sending. Uh, not think, me. No, not you. No. I think Mike Elgin is going to Mike Barcelona. should bring some ham back. We won't bail him out. Bring back the ham. I know. Hear our call, Mike. <laughs> Uh, Ron, what about you? Yes, if you want to follow my interest in ham, you can go to about.me slash ronxo where you can find links to all my social networks. Uh, I'm on Google Plus and Twitter and Instagram and all the fun stuff out Instagram. there. Instagram. Instagram. Um, and by day, you can go check out imagecomics.com where I'm helping make some of the best comic books in the world. And if you want to check those comics out for their live audience and for people who get it in the next 16 hours, uh, you can go to humblebundle.com slash books and we're in the last uh, less than one day of uh, the image comics humble bundle um so you can check that out uh and get a ton, get over 300 dollars worth of comics for whatever you want to pay wow recommended donation is 15 dollars. so there you go excellent and stuff. i totally just bought that by the way recently oh you did yeah the humble bundle oh sweet look at that yeah. look at that a happy customer so let me know let me know what you enjoyed for maybe us. she's not so happy maybe. oh wait no oh, yeah, she see, is she's happy she, there, she had yeah, the thumbs she, up yeah, she's happy okay all right <laughs> 
So. That was close. Yeah. Uh, that could have gone, it yeah, gone the other in the way. bad direction. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, Brian, what about you, sir? Uh, when I'm not TDing all about Android, I'm doing a show with Padre on Thursdays called Know How. Just recently updated uh, or just uploaded a video from our Saima uh, quadcopter segment. So uh, if you... If you happen to get one of these over Christmas and you want to know how to make it better and uh, mod your controller so it goes like way, way farther, kind of wow. dangerously far away. Uh, Are you then... breaking rules with this one? Or... No, no, no. Okay. No this rules like are broken. This... This week in quadcopters, I feel like uh, it's, it's like getting it's, there. Yeah, uh, it kind of is. I, I'm, 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 I'm okay with that. I'm just, yeah, it's, uh, it's not it's a bad just, thing. Yeah, that's just been my contribution so far. We're we're gonna be uh, getting into a bunch of different stuff this year, but uh, that was the last video I uploaded, so that's all I really had to share. Rad. <laughs> well, Brian, are, thank you, sir. I uh, appreciate it. You can find me at about.me slash Jason Howell. You can follow my musical exploits at yellowgoldmusic.com. Uh, there's raygun01.thinkup.com. Think up. If you want to check out Think Up. Very cool. And, uh, you know, check it out for yourself. I kind of highly recommend that because it's pretty awesome getting all those insights. Plug for Gina's thing because it's awesome. Uh, but that is it for this week. Thanks so much for joining us this week, everyone. You can leave us a voicemail at 347-SHOW-AAA. Again, I forgot to check the voicemail box. I promise I'll do it for uh. next week. Oh, I suck. Uh, email and video mail at triple A at twit.tv. You can find the show on Twitter. We're at Android Show. We have a subreddit. It's AAA or it's twitaa.reddit.com. Uh, we have show notes, all of our past episodes at twit.tv slash AAA. And you can, of course, find our episodes on YouTube and iTunes as well. And you can catch us live every Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific, live.twit.tv. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week on another episode of All About Android. Look at it. Look at it. Ow! Ow! <laughs>